Uh, uh, Uh-uh-uh. Don't turn that dial. This is the right station if you want to hear about Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the moon. Have you been listening to Jonathan Thomas and heard how well he's been keeping his promise? You know, he's been looking for poor Santa Claus because the Squeeboblians, who broke all the laws, kidnapped poor old Santa and hid him away. And they've looked for him now for days and days. That is Jonathan Thomas and the man in the moon and Gorgonzola the horse. And they must find him soon because if they don't, it's really quite clear we just won't have any Christmas this year. Now, the good fairy queen, she gave them a charm which she said would be sure to keep them from harm. It was a wonderful acorn that they had to take through the nightmare forest to keep them awake. For the nightmare forest is dark and deep, and they'd never wake up if they went to sleep. Well, they reached the forest, you remember well, and then they fell under the witch's spell. For a little white squirrel named Whiskery Bill just wouldn't behave, and he teased until poor Jonathan Thomas fell off of his horse, and then he went sound asleep, of course. Then Whiskery Bill, he cried and he cried, and he said, it's my fault, and I'd sooner have died than hurt Jonathan Thomas, but now it's too late. But the good fairy queen said, no, it is fate. Because if you find a red, red rose and hold it close to the little boy's nose, he'll wake up again. It's quite, quite true. But to find the rose will be up to you. So away he went in a terrible hurry. And he slipped and he slid and was all in a flurry till he met a kind walrus who said, I'll help you out. I'll just go along. I can help you, no doubt. So he did. But their hard luck was double. For the wicked old witch was bound she'd make trouble. But they found the red rubies, and the bush grew the rose. And at last they arrived in the forest so deep, and awoke Jonathan Thomas from his long, long sleep. They were soon on their way, the travelers three, bound that they'd set poor Santa Claus free. But they soon met a lion who asked them to dine when they named him Ojigrath, which he thought very fine. And now let's see how they're getting along. Oh, my goodness, I hope nothing's wrong. Oh, I'm much full of three times three. I've never eaten such a good dinner as that one was, Mr. Old Jai Graf. Oh, you're very kind, my little man. And now, if you've eaten all that you can, I'll show you a bed where you can lay your head. Thank you very much, Mr. Old Jai Graf. But we haven't time to stop, for we must hurry like 60 or 70 or 80 to the land of the squib bubble to rescue Santa Claus. Well, I'll give you fair warning. You'd best wait until morning and not travel when it's dark. For it's not such a lark to stumble and fall, and that's not all. But I don't know which is worse than which. The terror of night, with its horrible fright, or the doings of that wicked old witch. Well, we'll just have to take our chances. Well, you should wait, because it's late. But if you've made up your mind, and since you've been very kind... I'll give you a gift you can take. You've already given us our dinner, Mr. Old Jai Graf. But just the same, you've given me my name. And now I'll help you out with a secret or two and some things you can do to put that old witch plum to rout. That would be very nice if you please, Mr. Old Jai Graf. Sometimes that old witch drives me crazy. Well, she even makes me a bit sore. But she's afraid of my roar. <laughs> it frightens her out of her socks. <laughs> so I've, uh, I've packed up a few, and I'll give them to you. I've put them in this uh, little box. Do you mean some roars? Oh, yes. And you can't guess how she'll quickly run clear out of sight. I don't know why. But she'll scream, and she'll cry. My roars always give her a fright. I only wish I had more. I could spare only four. But that's enough to make things pretty hot. Well, how do we use them, if you please, Mr. Old Jai Graf? Well, when you see her coming, you needn't start in running. But stand right there till she lands from the air. And then open the box and throw them like rocks. Just one or two, of course, not all of the four. And she'll run and she'll shriek and be scared for a week. She always does when she hears my roar. That's very nice of you, Mr. Old Jai Graf. And it'll be quite a laugh to show that old witch a thing or two. I should say so. We are pleased to have met you. And now we'll be on our way. Well, I wish you success. And I guess all the rest. And I hope you have a good trip. And be careful of things. 
such as camels with wings. And be sure not to make a slip. We'll try, Mr. O'Digraf. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, here we go through the ice and the snow, and we're in a hurry because there'll be no cheer, no Christmas this year if we don't find Santa Claus. So, Gorgonzola, giddy up, giddy up, Gorgonzola, dandy, and with your speed be very fast, and with your feet be handy. And so they went and went and went and went, until their strength was nearly spent, until they came to a deep, dark wood, and they thought some rest might do them some good. So they stopped their horse, Gorgonzola, of course, and they got off and walked around. And then they sat to have a chat on a giant toadstool they had found. Oh, my gracious, I'm so tired. Oh, I think a little bit sleep. Jiminy crickets, don't go to sleep. You did that once, and it took us a week to wake you up. Oh, you needn't worry, if you please. I will go to sleep. I did that, I felt kind of sleepy. Well, it was cheap. Then go to sleep. Don't sit around and grouse. Who said that? And if you had the manners of a mouse, you wouldn't sit on a person's house. My goodness, we're not sitting on anybody's house. You are too, if you only knew. And I'll off you to get right off. Well, don't sit there and stare. My house is no chair. And this is no matter to laugh. Oh, look, Mr. Man in the Moon. It's a little elf. And you shouldn't say laugh, Mr. Elf. You should say laugh. It's laugh, if I please. And you may scoff and tease. I'll say whatever I wish. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself, you ignorant fish, because I am not just a little elf. Well, who on earth are you then? His Majesty, the King of any old thing. And I'll ask to be more polite, or I'll teach you to see that I'm big enough for me, you impertinent, impudent sprite. Oh, We beg your pardon, Your Majesty, but we didn't know that Toadstool was your house. Hmm. And, boar, if you'd looked, you'd have saw. Not have saw, Your Majesty, if you please, but have seen. Just keep it up, and you'll start a scene. I'll talk as I please, and I'll whistle and sneeze. And if you don't like it, get out, or I'll call for a cup. And then you'll soon stop. And all I need to do is to shout. You're not very nice. You're awfully grouchy, too, for such a little thing. I'll have you know that I am the king. And... (laughs) Jumping goldfish and seven years each. Run for your lives. It's the wicked old witch. Call out the guards. Roll the drums. Everybody hide, for here she comes. Quick, Jonathan Thomas, give me the box. We'll throw a lion's roar at her. And we'll see if Mr. O.J. Graff was right. The best you can do is get out of sight. <laughs> well, how do you do? It looks like I've caught up with you. I told you and warned you you'd better turn back. It seems that it's wisdom and good sense that you lack. So now, I guess I'll keep my promise. <laughs> I've come to get you, Jonathan Thomas. But you're not going to get me, though, you wicked old witch. And you'd better go right back to Rumpelstitz. <laughs> you foolish one. You'll rue your words when I am done. <laughs> oh, yes. There's still another thing. I've also come after the Elfin King. You better show it, Mr. Man on the Moon. Watch this, Jonathan Thomas. One for the money and two for the show. Three to get ready, and here I go. <laughs> Help, help! Oh, 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 stop, I say! That's no way for you to play! And here goes another one! (laughs) Oh, oh, I can't stand such things! As I said, it bothers my head! One ear is deaf, and the other one sings! Help! 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 By Jiminy Crickets, and look at her go! 
Mr. O. Jai Graff was right, for he told her so. My goodness to gracious, she's good and sore, for she can't stand a lion's roar. It's a good thing she can't, too. Well, she would have got me and gobbled me up. Oh, I'm glad she didn't. Where did his majesty go, Mr. Man in the Moon? I don't know. You, she's gone? Of course she has. Well, bless my hat. Thank you for that. Oh, such knifey rife is too much strife. And thanks to you, you saved my life. <laughs> oh, gee, well, okay. <laughs> it wasn't anything. It's quite a lot to save a king. And now, I'm mighty glad you stayed. And just for that, you'll both be paid. And richly, too, both you and you. Just name your price. And in a price, you'll have it before you can count up the two. Well, now, sounds like Jonathan Thomas and the Man in the Moon are in luck for once. For all elf kings are magic, you know. And maybe this one will have something to help them go to the land of Squeebobble. <laughs> oh, I hope so, don't you? I wonder what they'll ask for. Well, I guess we'll find out in the next story of Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the Moon. So don't forget to listen, will you? I won't. <laughs>